Ship tractor beams are here, and with them, the Argo SRV. These new tools are a shovel in a sandbox, and much like the multi-tool tractor beam transformed gameplay and events and activities like Jump Town, Xenothreat, and looting, these ship tractor beams could be another paradigm shift for Star Citizen at a time when the game is undergoing more change than ever. Let's explore what you can do with these tractor beams, why they're coming now, and which ships will get to use them. Thank you for coming to My Tomato Talk. If somebody asks you what kind of player you would suggest plays Escape from Tarkov, you might say somebody who enjoys FPS gameplay. For Satisfactory, somebody into building. For Euro Truck Simulator, I mean that much is obvious. Star Citizen is amongst a group of games that can be a bit hard to pin down. Yes, we can all say, well play it if you're into glitches, but jokes aside, we're at a point that people still don't believe this is a game in the making, but you can participate in FPS fighting, ship combat, mining in space, mining on the ground, mining underground, salvaging broken ships, racing around closed courses, cargo hauling, medical missions, and plenty of other things to do. In the future, we're looking at engineering, updated bounty hunting, investigations, base building, data running, proper exploration, and even farming. The options are going to be pretty wide reaching after some time. So no, it's not just if you like glitches. Every single one of these things can be affected in some way by tractor beams. And no matter who you are, what you do, or what gameplay you're interested in, this update will likely have a big impact on your gameplay as well. So tractor beams are rated just like components. Size zero is your multi-tool attachment, size one is the handheld tool, size two are vehicle tractor beams, and size three is the special SRV ship-focused beam. Though there are size one tractor beams as well, like on the Nomad. Each of these sizes acts based on mass, as can be seen in each UI-specific carrying capacity. You can also see that same mass will require different amounts of force from each device, hinting at the possible restrictions coming ahead for some of the lasers. In practice, this should mean a box of titanium may be movable by your handheld tool in space, but would require a proper tool to move down on a planet. This feeds into the logistics and planning of cargo hauling, but it also limits the tractor beams in usage. Additionally, in the future, these tools will run on batteries that can run out, so they will still be a limited use item as they compete with your other priorities for resources. As of now though, we've only just gotten access to a rough version of tractor beams in the limited PTU early testing phase, but results are looking good. We have a pretty robust UI design that provides information readouts on the relative position of you and your target, as well as your ship's crucial information. In my opinion, this UI is actually pretty comprehensive and it gives you all the information you really need to tow correctly. The updated sound effects and animations also give the tractor beams a bit more heft and presence than they did before. The tractor beams interact with most things you'd expect. Cargo, live vehicles, destroyed vehicles, and some mineable asteroids. And already some pretty fun applications, both useful and maybe not so much. Jesus, I'm gonna hit the station. Oh! Boom! <laughs> size 2 and Size 1 tools have been added to the game, and while the multi-tool does have a noticeable power difference to the others, there's sure to be plenty of balance to make the power discrepancy more noticeable. Regardless, the results have been pretty exciting. Now in terms of usage, I've managed to haul derelict ships from a small single-seater up to a large cargo hauler, taking them out of mission locations and somewhere new where I could work on them in privacy which could provide an easier time or even a service to others for salvaging in less remote locations. The same can be said for mineables like Quantanium, which could be hauled near refinery hosting Lagrange stations. I've been able to easily load and unload vehicles and cargo to and from ships, sometimes without even landing. This streamlines manual efforts by allowing the ship to easily offload its payload and get going while the ground crew handles organization. As we move forward with the cargo refactor, raiding missions, and more large-scale logistics in-game, this is probably going to be more common than you think, and could save you from a lot of danger. Combining efforts in certain ships can allow one player to fly, while another pulls or moves around objects in vehicles. This can allow players to get pretty creative with things like ballistas or even an EMP cyclone or something. You can also combine efforts to lift objects that might overpower just a single tractor beam. 
and you will be able to pull objects through quantum travel, at least with the Argo SRV. In addition to these early applications, we also know some of the limitations of the devices. Shielded objects cannot be trapped by the beam. Hauling strength and control are mass and inertially determined. As you pull objects around, they will realistically stress your ability to keep them under control. Even as you fly in a straight line, this can lead to some pretty catastrophic problems that are hard to solve. I personally know you can accidentally swing objects and ships into your own ship with the large SRV if you aren't careful, and it will kill you. And for the rear-mounted tractor beams, things can be a bit awkward as you push cargo and vehicles underneath you into the ship. Possibly raising the clearance of the beam could help here, but that may be difficult for some ships. On that subject of improvements, I think a magnetic cursor similar to what the map team did with the star map cursor would really help players understand what it is they are going to tractor. For instance, I would love to be able to pull a box off the hull A, and while that's currently possible, it's a bit difficult to know exactly what you'll be interacting with before you actually do. Now I've barely even touched this feature, and the scope of it when used in groups of industrial gameplay seems pretty big. It makes everything from slightly nudging salvage back into position to packing an entire ship with different sized cargo boxes an activity of ease, but also some skill. This is another winning addition to the game in my opinion, and I look forward to seeing it balanced and improved. As Star Citizen keeps growing, there will be more application for ships with tractor beams and the technology itself in any part of the sandbox gameplay and across missions. But the absolute top priority of this feature needs to be missions that require us to move debris and ships away from space stations and to a predetermined salvage location, because then everybody wins. And while this feature is really highlighted by the Argo SRV finally being in-game, purpose-built for the feature, there are several ships that will benefit from this as well. Let's take a look at each and how they might benefit exactly. There are a few different types of tractor beam applications. Some are meant to assist the ship itself, others are meant to allow for other uses like loading other ships. Some are remote, and some are fully manned, like in the Constellation Taurus. First on the list is the Nomad. This thing is a sleeper. With 24 SU of cargo at only 19 meters long, this is one of the smallest vehicles that makes decent money trading. It can also carry a Cyclone, ROC, STV, or PTV on its open-air deck. This open-air design allows for easy loading and unloading, and with a tractor beam included on the utility mount in the back, this thing will be able to load up completely spending only seconds on the ground. Seriously, imagine showing up at your org base with one of these to load the cargo that was already left waiting for you. This thing will be much more useful from now on. The Cutlass is probably the most common multi-crew ship in Star Citizen. It's perfect for a lot of things and largely represents a good upgrade from the Avenger Titan or CO Nomad in my opinion. Like the Nomad, the Cutlass features a laser out back, but the implementation will likely see some changes to allow for better visibility in the future. As of right now, it's pretty hard to see inside of the Cutlass Black with the tractor beam. Regardless, when the ship's tractor beam can self-load the cargo deck, likely with a laser extender like what can be seen on the Zeus CL concept art, the Cutlass Black will rise in efficiency and usefulness from even where it is now. Good to remember with these ships too, is that these tractor beams can help with cargo consolidation out in space. This can be an oftentimes forgotten but very useful part of the cargo transfer process, and a remote tractor beam would make it much easier. The Spirit C1 is the newest ship on this list. As of the time of writing, it's still not even in the live game. But much like the Cutlass Black, it has a tractor beam that's well positioned for cargo consolidation. Unfortunately, also like the Cutlass Black, loading vehicles in and out of the cargo bay can be a bit weird. Sometimes you need to push the vehicles up against the ramp to move them up into the location you want. It's especially weird considering this is a new design that I thought would have accounted for all this. We'll have to see how the issue is solved, but it can make loading the ship a little bit awkward. That being said, it is still incredibly useful at the moment. The Origin 315P is a ship that benefits from this turret in assisting others more than itself. As such a small and agile ship, this single-seater can act as a great cargo loader and transporter for larger ships like the Hull C. But at the end of the day, it's an explorer, and it'll be interesting to see how this tool could be applied to that profession. Speaking of the Hull C, it has received its four tractor beams with this update. Unfortunately, you can't have four people controlling them all at once. 
This would make loading the ship probably much faster, and maybe it was done for balance purposes. But I'm hoping CIG does allow at least for the co-pilot console to assist in control of the tractor beams. As it is now, you'll have one player able to use the different beams to likely assist the third-party ships like MPUVs and 315Ps. But as a ship that requires a lot of moving boxes, this is one that will require some skill when using tractor beams, for sure. And it's good to remember that these tractor beams are not set up in a way that are easy, per se. Yes, you can pick them up, but it's actually going to take some effort to become an efficient and skillful user of these devices. And I think that's a pretty good balance. Now, the Caterpillar is one of the older ships to receive tractor beams, but it gets two. One on either side. Just like some other ships, I think this implementation would benefit from a tractor beam extender, but we'll have to see which way CIG decides to go with it. With the modular nature of the Caterpillar and the capacity to carry in its side opening doors, this could also be a really useful application for tractor beams. Both current salvage ships feature utility mounts. In fact, all of these ships have utility mounts that are technically supposed to be able to be traded out with other tools, but we'll see how that works. Currently, both salvage ships can do just that. Trade out a salvage laser for a tractor beam to easily move the target and keep it steady while you scrape and tear away. This is going to be really useful for the solo or small team salvage crews, but I would have loved to see a remote size 1 or size 0 laser in the Vulture to cut down on the back and forth in that ship. Finally, to round out the vehicles in-game benefiting from this feature, the MPUV, which has previously been teased with its utility mount, will also receive the ability to help load ships like the Hull C. Does this defeat the purpose of the large 32 SCU cargo hauling stance of the ship? I'm not sure, but it certainly increases the ship's use. This is only the first batch of ships to benefit from this feature. The effect will continue across many professions, missions, and gameplay styles over the years. And while this first implementation is useful, there's still a long way for these to go to reach their full potential. But there's no doubt, Star Citizen is gaining new speed as the engine matures and development starts to turn more towards the game's development. I'll keep you updated on upcoming ships, features, and major updates here on this channel and the second one, Space Tomato 2. There's going to be a lot to go over in the coming year. And if you're interested in learning more about this seeming turning point for Star Citizen and why it's happening now, we just covered it in a two-hour podcast with Salty Mike, Ferrister, Red Monster, and Hybrid V Audio, which I'll leave linked down below for you as well as my other podcast, which happens weekly going over Star Citizen progression. Anyways, I hope you learned something new and interesting in this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.